Well, folks, this is it. Episode 30, All Good Things. The finale. The end of this campaign, what we've been building to for the last, um, even though it's called episode 30, we this is really episode 78 of this campaign. Uh, it's episode 30 since we, uh, since the three-year time jump in the story when we uh, renamed the podcast Starring D&D Grandma. But um, it's been a wild, wild journey. I can't tell you how much it's meant to us to have all of you listening to this story, to have all of you being a part of it. We love every message, tweet, um, email we've ever gotten in, su- in support of our group, in support of our family, in support of our podcast. The fan art has just been absolutely amazing. There will be some fan art that's going to be tweeted as sort of a companion piece to this episode. It was a wonderful piece done by at Art Carey. That's at A-R-T-K-A-R-E-E. And uh, we're going to be tweeting that. I don't want to ruin it. I'd rather you just go to our Twitter and check it out. It is, it, it's absolutely fantastic, and we were blown away by it. Thank you so much, uh, Carrie, for, for doing that for us. So uh, everyone has their own little finale, every character in this, in this episode. I worked with all the players individually to find a, a proper way to send their characters off. They all had their different ideas. Some were simple. Some were complex. All were beautiful. Um, Each player was given the choice if they wanted to narrate it or if they wanted me to do it. Some of them chose me. Some of them chose for them to do it. Some let me surprise them uh, without giving, you know, anything away. Laura, for example, wasn't sure what she wanted Umbra, how she wanted Umbra to, to be sent off. And she put it fully in my hands and said, whatever you think would be right for Umbra, I trust you. Kristen, when she gets to Sariel, a lot of it was hers, but then I surprise her at the end of it with something else, and uh, it was just, it, it was a lot of, a lot of emotions <laughs> happen at the table, you're gonna hear a lot of sniffling, and um, it's, it was a great, a great experience, uh, emotion, emotional roller coaster, but it was wonderful, it was beautiful, and I am just honored to have been a part of it. Um, you'll also hear me use an NPC to kind of weave it all together and I use that NPC to say goodbye to these characters as well because as a DM I am going to miss these characters that's really all I've got to say I'm not going to do any shout outs or anything like that because uh, I'm going to just kind of try to let this episode speak for itself so thank you for being a part of it thank you for being part of our extended family we hope you enjoyed our story as much as we did creating it and um, we hope you all stick around for the next campaign which will be posted shortly On behalf of the family that games together, thank you, and enjoy. And here we are, folks. The final episode. Of this campaign, God, this the, come a long way. right? Tor's the, not happy. <laughs> the game will continue, but this story is is coming to a close. Guys, I think I'm so, already crying. Where are the freaking tissues? <laughs> hey, I have napkins. You. They're behind you. Yeah, oh behind. yeah, they are. I have tissues. We'll pass them. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> We're just giving the she whole just box. Took seven tissues. <laughs> I was gonna throw. Them. <laughs> Mm. You don't I'm, cry, do you? You're gonna cry. Okay. Through my nose. Maybe we'll make a gimmick. We'll say this episode is going up unedited. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is gonna stay on. Oh, cool. Okay. So. so we're still having our E for explicit. Always. <laughs> Rating. Please. Always. I knew that before I started. I'm like, I know my family. So standing in the dungeon, uh, uh-huh. having defeated Rowena, and looking down at the rapier as you pull it out and just kind of take a minute to survey what just happened. The dungeon itself begins to, you feel a rumbling, an earthquake type tremor. You can feel the shaking and the walls begin to crack. How much time do I have? And you see the ceiling begin to crack. I'm going to start casting teleportation circle as fast as I can. Okay. That takes a minute. Uh Uh-huh. In the minute, you see parts of the ceiling begin to fall. Oh, shit. But... 
they pass right through you. It falls and it doesn't do any, doesn't hurt you at all. It's just, it almost looks like you're, think uh, the X-Men, the danger room, mm -hmm. and it almost looks like pieces are just like being peeled away. Okay. And you all get sort of surrounded in this sort of crazy, chaotic, arcane energy. And when it starts to fade, you find yourself standing in the upper city where the dragon's armaments should be, but you're standing in an empty lot. Ooh. And all the people you left at the top of the dungeon are still there. Samwell is there. Ren, So, and all of them are there. Steven. I think Wendell was with you. And they're so all... all an illusion? And they're all just confused as all hell. As whatever magic held this place together died with Rowena. I just kind of, I look around and I'm like, is, is it real? Are we really here? That makes sense. I started getting the headaches when I first walked in. So maybe that's what it was. I look at Sam and I'm like, are you real? <laughs> so, do to be intact. I feel lightheaded. It definitely hugs right. Steven. As he inappropriately grabs himself. <laughs> yep. Yep, all there. She runs up to <laughs> Samwell and she wraps her arms around his neck and she just holds him and she starts crying. Oh, let me enfold you and hold you to my heart. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I know. I know. I'm, I'm taking it that you won. <laughs> won. I think we did. Yeah, I'm hugging well. Steven. I'll talk to him later. Okay. Yeah, I want to hear all about it. It wasn't that exciting. It wasn't that exciting. Really? I think it'd be really exciting. No. It was not. <laughs> okay. Try sitting on the city wall for eight hours watching trees and talk to me about exciting. <laughs> okay. I walked in the room, someone pointed a finger at me, and then I literally don't remember anything else until all of a sudden I like woke up and I was like, I'm on the ground, so I'm thinking I must have died, but okay. See? Not exciting, babe. I still think it's pretty exciting. <laughs> okay, so... What would everybody want to do at this point? Like, just in the moment. We're going to get to what, everything that's been planned. Just in the immediate future, in the next 12 hours or so. What does everyone want to do? Sleep. Definitely. Yeah. E Samwell is what you want to do? Shower. I want to do Samwell. <laughs> okay. Um, but take me to my father first. Sure. Hot bath. Hot bath. Food and sleep. Yeah. Okay. Those are my needs right now. Okay. Father and Samwell. He takes you to your father. Reunion. Reunion. Tears. Of this course. This is what she was. Of course. And this is what her plan was. You tell her everything? You tell him everything? I tell him everything. It goes about as well as you expected. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a bit of shock. Quite a bit of rage. And he's just happy that you're safe. All right. So the next 12 hours pass. Everyone rests. Everyone gets their bath. Their food. They're 12, uh, they're night to process. Yeah. And Sariel, I guess we'll start with you. Okay. How do you want to go about what you have planned? Do you call a meeting? Do you... Um, so I first have to go into the upper city to the business district, and I need to find someone okay. to make what I need made. Okay. You do know a few other enchanters in the city who can, mm -hmm. who that's more up their field. Even when you thought Rowena was just a magic shop owner, she was more evocation magic. This mm -hmm. is what you're looking for, is more enchantment. Mm -hmm. So you do find an enchanter in the upper city. Very reputable, comes with references. <laughs> if Sariel would have had, what's her name? Your assistant? Marlena. Would have had Marlena check all the references, <laughs> and she comes up with this one. Mm -hmm. You get your pieces made, mm -hmm. and we'll say... That would take quite a while. That might take maybe, I'd say, over a week. Okay. Well, I would commission the pieces, and I would probably check on to remain textiles and the, the what's been going is on there. Marlena's doing a fine job. <laughs> a fine job. Not you. She's not quite the sales lady you are. But in terms mm. of the logistics and operations of running the okay. business, she's doing a fine job. Okay. I would also probably go to some sort of like calligrapher or whoever to draft up invitations to the rest of my party after I got the date for those pieces. Okay. To the rest of the party to meet at 
Crow Manor for a feast, a party, so that okay. I can give those to them. You all receive an invitation the next day after defeating Rowena from Sariel to meet at Tremaine? No, Tremaine is destroyed. As, a, oh, as all right. I know right now. That's right. Uh, to meet at Crow. Crow Manor. Crow Manor, yeah. Mm-hmm. For a, for lack of a better word, a party. Mm-hmm. Is there anything anybody wants to do in the next, in that time? If it's related directly to your epilogue, we'll, we're going to be jumping around the timeline too. I should okay. let you guys know that. Your epilogues are all happening at different times. Gotcha. Not all, but we're going to be jumping up and down. So, like, if you wanted to do yours right away. I don't have to do it right away, but it could start. Does that make sense? The headaches continue Mm -hmm. and get worse and worse to the point where you almost miss Sariel's party. You wake up that morning with a severe mind grain. Can I talk to Smadriel before the party? Sure. But I was going to say, you get to a point where you kind of kind of get the timing of the ebbs and the flows and you realize you think you've got a couple hour window where you can go to the party and get home without it being an issue. Okay. And you want to talk to Samandriel? So, Sariel, do you mind if I jump to her for a second? Okay. I'm going to ask, do you know what this is? Why are we getting headaches? Why? What is this? Because I have to leave you soon. Why do you have to leave me? There is a great calamity coming and I have to go home. To help deal with it. So what what happens to us? There will be no more us. How long do we have? Two days. Three at the most. Okay. For me to do it safely. I could leave you right now, but you'd be in great peril. I'm holding on as long as I can to give you the best chance you can of surviving the transition. Okay. It'll give me time to get everything in order. I'm going to then go to Steven, and I'm just going to say, I think it's really important that we go to Sariel's party tonight. I know we've been having these headaches, but I think it's really important that we go. Are, are, are you sure? I mean, I get so worried when you get like that. No, no, no. I think I'll be all right for the rest of the party. And I'm, I'm getting better at handling it, so I think we should definitely go to the party. And... I mean, all right, I trust you. Yeah, I think I think I'll be fine. I really want to see everybody. And then I'm going to go out and I'm going to get five, no, six candles. Okay. I'm going to get six candles and I'm going to bunch them together and tie them together. And I'm going to light all of them. And I'm just going to sit in a quiet room and I'm going to wait for that all to melt down. Okay. As I just think and contemplate and everything. And then we'll go to the party. Okay. And one by one, you all arrive to the... Tell us. Tell us about the party. It's just really a a thank you party for everything, of course, in true serial fashion. It's big, it's grand, it's beautiful. Food, abundance of food, (laughs) crows doing his thing, being a great host. The aviary is there, the town guard is there, anyone who's anyone is there. And Serial has these... Six lacquer boxes in her hands, wrapped up with a white ribbon. And she pulls you guys aside, or she talks to you one by one. And she says, if she could speak, <laughs> if you could please meet me in the side room, in the, in the office where we had the, the zone of truth. Oh, okay. I'm going to absolutely think, oh shit, what is this? <laughs> So she goes into that and she just waits for everybody to go there. And once everybody arrives, she kind of closes the door and she has the the six lacquer boxes there. And she gives Tor a box first. And she says, Tor, you're going to have to edit this, dude. This is bad. (laughs) Just go with it, girl. Just go with it. I have never met anybody stronger (laughs) or braver that was willing to pick us up when we were down and be that muscle when we needed it and take all the hits when we couldn't. And she opens up his box and I say, 
this one is for you and it's a, br a beaded bracelet and when I give it to you there is one bead on it and you kind of look at it and it's like a little movie that plays on it and it's when the hammer came into your hands um, and the Durgard army drops their weapons and you just have you so it keeps replaying right it's cool like a little movie screen. Yes, yeah. Over and, over. and she gives you, she like goes up on her tiptoes and tries to kiss your cheek. Wow, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> then she goes over to Umbra. Nice. And she holds Umbra's box and opens it. There is no one that I know that is smarter or stealthier or that I would want to have by my side. Thank you so much. And I know I was a pain, but you were by far one of the greatest warriors I have ever met in my entire life and I'm so glad my husband has you she opens up her box and on there's another bead and that bead has you riding on a wyvern exploding all the gunpowder oh. in the battle of white bridge I loved this <laughs> got your good side too nice. Sariel goes over to Ember with her box mm. Ember my more than compatriot and she does this and she pants herself because it's hard. <laughs> Human noble bar. My more than compatriot. My sister. Thank you for always being there. For always warming us with your fire. The fire doesn't always exist in your hands. It exists in your heart. And I love you. I show you your bracelet and your bead comes up with you. Uh, the final takedown of Okeanos when you are boiling and steaming him to death with you just there. <laughs> she takes another box and goes to Nulara. Oh, no. Nulara, you have saved me. Physically, spiritually, mentally, you have saved my father. You are the sweetest, kindest, and most blessed person that I know. Thank you for loving me always. She gives her her box. And you see on a different bead, you holding up the medallion and Cormion being vanquished. Everybody, everybody was. And then she goes for the last box. Well, not the last, second to last box. <laughs> and she's shaking. And she goes to Sashim. <laughs> I can't even do this one. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my god, forget it. <laughs> to Sashim, my best friend. I never thought you would ever agree, but here you are. Slapping me when I need sla to be slapped. Protecting me when I need to be protected. And loving me in your own special way. Your friendship is one that I treasure. And I'll forever love you. She gives you your box. And on your bead is your fight with the bear and reuniting with your people. Once everybody <laughs> has their bracelets, Sariel asks you to put them on. Where's your bracelet? Yeah, you know, I'm putting mine on right now. And she puts one on to her wrist as well. You all forms me into who I am. And I can't thank you enough. You are all part of my story. And I hope that in some way, I am part of yours. And when she says that, a different beat on the bracelet, on everyone's bracelet, lights up. And it's intertwined peacock and crow feathers. If you ever forget how special you are to me, just say, Heroes of White Ridge. And on that, you look at your bracelets, and every single scene lights up at the same time showing you your greatest, what I felt to be your greatest part in battle. No matter where we go, we're all going to be together again. You'll always be in my heart. Thank you for everything. And she cries and kisses you all again. Wow. We all hold you and we give you kisses. We didn't form you, honey. You always had this in you. You were always this strong. You you made us grow. And we all found each other. And we all helped each other grow. I mean, we were all separate and alone. 
and over these last years this is this is it wasn't just us it was you and us it was everybody to me you are the greatest fighters and warriors and friends and what these do you beads, mean to you to these the world beads. we are awesome <laughs> <laughs> these beads kind don't do it justice thank you now I really need to go out and have a drink, and I need you people to enjoy this party. No. <laughs> Before we leave, I don't want to bring this down, but I told them what Samadriel and I talked about that afternoon, that okay. Samadriel will be leaving me. What does that mean? So when I don't always look like this, and you know this, I've mentioned this to me, to you guys in the past, that I burned my city down. I almost killed my husband, and I ran. Smadriel found me and picked me up, and we formed a bond together. And through this bond, my hair turned white, my skin went all by now, and I've been able to control my powers. Smadriel controls my power. I don't even do it. And I've slowly grown, and I've learned, and I mean, now I can even heal myself with my flame. I just... I feel like I don't know what's going to happen. I could burn up and I could be gone. Do you want us there? No, I could. I would. It would break my heart if you guys were there. I was thinking about this all day today. I burned a candle for each one of us for the past and the present and the future. I'm going to walk out to the long pier over the water and I'll do it there and hopefully... I won't hurt anybody. Steven and I are going to talk and he's, <clears throat> he's going to be there and he'll have to do something if, if I can't control it. But for all the things that she just said that I am not eloquent enough to say, I agree. You guys have shaped my life and you guys have made me who I am and I will treasure this life with you guys always. This adventure, these adventures together will always be the definition of who I am. So I don't know when it's going to happen, but I want tonight to be happy and joyful and remembrance and love. And I will always be with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we broke mom again. <laughs> the rest of the night passes as joyfully as possible. Drinks are had, reminiscing is done, good times are had by all. And as the party begins winding down, on the side, like when someone enters a room and they knock on the hallway, and they knock on the archway, you see uh, Samwell enters, and Wendell is right behind them. I don't mean to intrude, but if your party's wrapping up, I'd like to borrow my wife. She dabs her eyes. <laughs> and what do you need me for? Take a walk with me. Okay. I want to give her one last hug and a squeeze and a kiss. Oh, she's giving everybody hugs and squeezes and kisses <laughs> all over again. And as you all begin filing out, Samwell leaves Crow Manor. He just takes you down the topiary and out into the upper city. Mm-hmm. And Wendell just... Hello? <laughs> Wendell's in the room with us? Oh, yeah, Wendell's there. What's up, Wendell? <laughs> I don't quite know how to, how to deal with all of this, so I'm just going to say hello. How's your hand? Good. <laughs> it can be now, Wendell. You know, I always tell you not now. It could be now. You could come and join us. Have a drink. I think I might like that. Come on. Mm. And he gets up and he says, Oh, but first, um, Black Heron. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that, that, that strange tree outside? No. And he's kind of looking at you like, Yes, mm. it's a very strange tree. You <laughs> might want to go take a look. I know how much you like strange trees. Trees. Yeah. Great. All right. Wink, wink, <laughs> nudge, nudge. It's got like Trying to be clandestine, you all know exactly what he's doing. Okay. All right. So I follow him out to the tree. Yes. I think you have a mission, dude. Then he gets okay. a twitch. And he takes you out the back door okay. of Crow Manor, through the kitchen, out to the oh, back, okay. and po- it's 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 a drop. Okay. You, you definitely can see it's clearly a drop. Okay. I was just told to point it out to you. And say whatever it says in there, tell no one. Okay. Okay. Godspeed. Awesome, Wendell. <laughs> and he okay. goes back inside. 
Okay. So what is it? It's like a box or something? Yeah, it's, a, it, it, okay. it's, it's like one of the fake bird's nests. You can tell. It's oh, cool. yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, I'll open it up. You open it up, mm-hmm. and it's coordinates to one of the underground um, safe, safe houses. Oh, okay. And it's basically like coded as in get there now. Oh, get there now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, like, so I'll go. In the the, co- the the aviary code that they put in there, it's like, drop everything and go now. Mm. Okay. So you, okay. without even okay. rolling a dice, you roll like a 38 stealth. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gone. Okay. Yeah. And we will come back to that. Okay. So Ariel, Samwell's walking through the city with you. And it's it's a nice night. Um, stars are out, it's a clear night. It appears your adventures, your adventures might be done for a little while. It looks that way, and she kind of looks around, and she's like, "I don't recall the last time we've ever we've taken a walk together." <clears throat> I know. We've probably had one of the rockiest starts to a marriage in the history of Aranas. <laughs> Nothing ever does go perfectly for us, does it? No. I don't hold it against you, thinking that uh, this was a marriage of convenience or power. I probably would have doubted my intentions if I was in your position as well. And admittedly, for a lot of our marriage, I, uh, I put my responsibilities as a husband on the back burner. She kind of just nods. She doesn't really say anything. I didn't even get to take you on a proper honeymoon. No. So I hope you'll forgive me. I spoke to Maria. Mary. Marlena. Marliana. Marlena. I spoke to Marlena and I made the necessary arrangements with your father as well. You remember that airship? Yes. Well, see, I kind of maybe sort of chartered it. And with this, the airship lifts up from the upper city and begins flying over to <laughs> you. Wow. He knows, um, Simon, what do you mean you chartered an airship? <laughs> what do you say to two months in Valorous? I hear it's lovely this time of year. Are you serious? You would take me on a honeymoon? Yes, right now. Your luggage has already been packed. I had to pay more gold for that than the uh, the airship itself. (laughs) (laughs) Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah, that was good. And you do love me so much. Yes, very much. Then I can't wait to go on a honeymoon with you. Well, then let's get on the ship, (laughs) goddammit. And they lower the rope, uh, the rope ladders, and he escorts you. He makes sure that you get up, and he comes up behind you. And Captain Hamill is there with his oversized th- tri corner hat. Um, and there are you recognize most of the crew because you've been on the airship before. But there are six figures walking around the ship that were not part of the original crew, and they're sort of opening things up, looking in barrels, this and that, and. A seventh one comes up from below deck, dark cloak, tight studded leather armor, uh, bandana around his head, and he walks right up to Samwell, and you can see he's an older human man, maybe like mid-40s, uh, he's got like a five o'clock shadow, he looks like he's one of those guys that has a perpetual five o'clock shadow, you know those guys? <laughs> yes. Lord Crow, all is safe below deck, ship is safe for, for travel. Thank you. Sariel. I hope you'll uh, allow me to introduce. I hired a private security team. This is going to be your personal bodyguard. Dante, let me introduce my wife, Sariel. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, ma'am. It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> <clears throat> and as he walks away to get back to work, Samuel leans into you and he's like, He's cute, don't you think? <laughs> he's very cute, Samuel, but this is my honeymoon. Well, I'm. You need to have a little fun at least. <laughs> Just shut up and kiss me already. Will you kiss me like you love me? <laughs> and he does. And with that, the airship lifts off and sails in the direction of Valorous. Aww. <laughs> Yay. Yay. And Sashim. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do Uh-oh. you want to narrate it or do you want me to describe what you gave me? And your call. I'll completely leave it up to you. I'm fine either way. All right, so we're going to jump back into the timeline a little bit. Yeah. The night of that party before Sariel and Sam bid adieu. 
Sariel notices that Sashim is very, very quiet. And she has been for the last couple of weeks, whatever the time frame is since we've been done with Rowena, but she doesn't want to talk about it. So Sariel being Sariel, she just decides to pull her on the side and say, what is wrong? And Sashim says, for the first time in her life, when we fought the dragon, and I was unconscious two, three times, whatever it was, I experienced something that was never experienced before. Fear. And even though we went through all the adventures and we were able to get through it, and I was banished, and I was blinded, but I wasn't as scared that time because I had all you guys. But I don't think I can do adventuring or the military anymore. So, Sariel's like, of course. So she talks to her father and immediately offers her a position as head of security and logistics at Tremaine Enterprises. So she doesn't have to travel unless... The private sector. <laughs> the private sector, if you want to say. She doesn't have to travel, <laughs> but in case there's a little up rising here or there and they need oh, help nice. I can oh, go nice. now for a honeymoon she just didn't want to be around Sariel so Dante takes over as private bodyguard but after they come back I'm basically her private bodyguard at all functions Whoa. and if they need somebody to represent Tremaine Enterprises I can go in their stead it's not a bad life I'll be your eyes you be my sword mm. And I realize what it's like to have a good friend. And with that, Sashim finally has peace in her heart. I like that. One thing you notice, Sashim, as you accompany her to events. Yes. And you would know why, and we'll get to this. Mm. Samwell takes less and less of a public role. Mm -hmm. He begins more of a... Um, Sort of just kind of a home, more of a homebody, stick to the shadows kind of guy. Okay. And where Samwell would be coming in to do his meet and greets with officials and do the underhanded, under the table, yeah. aviary deals, you see Wendell doing a lot more of that. Okay. Just an observation. That will be explained later on. Okay. I'm just saying that's something Sashim would have noticed. Of course. Of course. I'm building to something. I know, I know. Oh no. So Sashim has peace in her heart. Yes. Tor. You know what? You read it. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Tor spent his post-adventuring days hanging up his great axe, unless those situations where he really needed it, and he became a builder. <laughs> he built his own home that he lived in, and he worked on a project overseeing it, building a home for the elderly where those, the senior citizens of Whitebridge would be protected and cared for. And he started to dabble in a new hobby of his, eventually becoming the head chef for the elderly home. Aww. That's so cool! With, That's so cool! With all the great battles and the victories that he won with his party, he never felt more pride than when he would put a delicious, nourishing meal on the table as a way of giving back to the citizens of Whitebridge, who took him in and made him... Made him one of their own. I'm embellishing. No, no, that's, that's perfect. That's where I'm rather when the be real. and when the final meals get served at the home, and Tor gets to indulge in his favorite pastime: taking a plate that he left for himself out to the mayor's island to sit and have his dinner under the stars. There, having his evening meal after a hard day of work, he gets to survey the process, the progress the city has made. I think this is where I embellish a little. But cool. I think I think you'll like it. Yeah, yeah. Where he gets to survey the progress the city has made, and slowly, day by day, one day at a time, he gets to watch the white bridge be rebuilt. Oh, okay. One brick, one stone, one piece of paint at a time. That's mm. cool. And he thinks about days gone by. Sometimes, because he sits right there on that patch of grass, he sees Nulara in the window of the cottage, and he waves to her. Sometimes new Laura joins him, comes outside and they'll have a tea or an ale 
and remember old times together. And sometimes Wendell joins them as well. Working his way back from forth in the city, Wendell always knows to bring a flask when he goes to see Tor. Tor doesn't drink as much as he used to, but he thoroughly does enjoy sharing a libation or three with his second favorite halfling buddy. Nice. That's that's where I left off. Cool. Before. That's nice. I hope you like what no, I added perfect. there. No, no, yeah. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's beautiful. <laughs> it was. Oh, Very that's nice. awesome. Okay. <laughs> Ember. Oh, good. I'm too. I'm within arm's reach of mom. I don't like this. <laughs> She's gonna hit me. Okay. So I'll say. Do you want to start with you and Steven at the Lopa? Um. Yes, but after the excitement of the event that night of the party that night i think it's just better to do it tonight right after the party yeah okay you would actually see the airship take off yeah when i see that i think like it's a good time okay i don't want to prolong it anymore i think i'm i think i'm ready so you go that night i'm gonna walk that night steven doesn't quite understand but he trusts you and follows you I'm gonna walk out to the as like the longest pier that I can find and as far out into the water. And while I'm walking with him, I'm just gonna say what Samadriel told me and that that it's time. That I What do you mean it's time? Time for what? I did I did some amazing stuff, but this is kind of borrowed time. I don't know what it what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's going to happen because I don't know how strong I've got. I don't know if it's going to be too much for me to handle like it was. I don't know if my flame is can be even worse and it's just going to engulf me and f- swallow me whole. Well, I'll be here till the end. But not too close, okay? All right, but I'm not going to leave you. I don't want you to be here, but I know I'm not going to get rid of you either. No, no way. You tried once. I think I did a pretty good job of that, though. Yeah, but I'm like a bad penny. (laughs) I always turn up. Do you have your crossbow, like your weapon with you? Keep it handy, just in case. I don't like that, but I trust you. I don't want to cause anybody any harm. I almost killed you, and I could not even bear the thought of you being burned at all. A single scar hurting you would just destroy me. I'm here. I'm ready to. I'm done being this person. I'm done being this strong. I'm. I just want to go home. I just want to be with you, and I want to work at a flower shop, and that's all I want. So let's see what happens. Okay. I'm gonna walk out to the very end of the pier. I'm gonna tell him farther, farther. I'm gonna keep trying to push him back, even though he won't go. I know. I'm gonna release my wings for my last time. I'm going to fly way up into the air, and I'm going to hold Samadriel, hold myself. And when it happened the first time, we spun together. When you go on the edge of the pier and you <clears throat> grab yourself, without even controlling it, your wings open. And this column of flame surrounds you, and you get lifted off the pier. And it's this sort of dance. And Stephen, on sitting on the shore, can't tell where you start and where Samandriel be- begins. Slowly, she lowers you down into the water. But the fire's still there. And the water is bubbling around you. And steam is rising into the air. And the pain is almost unbearable. Like you're yelling, but just gargling water. I want to tell Samadriel before she leaves my arms to go find somebody else and rescue somebody else now. And to leave. I doubt I'll find one as good as you are. And the flames, in an instant, are gone. And you're there. Make your way back to the top and... You pull in fresh air, uh, having breached the surface. 
And as you make your way to the shoreline, you look up at Steven, and he looks shell-shocked. And when you look down, you realize the hair hanging in front of your face is black. And you look down at your hands, and your olive skin tone has returned. You're also stark naked, but that's okay. okay. <laughs> Steven was smart enough to bring a change of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs to you and kisses you. Dries you off and gives you fresh clothes. Do I feel a flame within me? Do you try to cast? I'm going to tell him to step back. He does. And I'm going to look at my hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold them together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to open them. And I'm going to try to create a small flame in my hands. Like create a bonfire, almost? Like, just light my hands up. Oh, like how you the fiend. Okay. Yeah, just light my hands. <sighs> Nothing. No flame. Nothing. I start shaking and crying. And I hug Steven again. He doesn't know what's happening, but he's, he's, he's happy you're happy? No more magic. No more flame. Oh. Is, no more spells. Is that good? It's really good. No more no more surprise talking in my head? Correct. <laughs> I could do without that. I love you, but I could do without that. I might, I mean, we could get like... I'm never ready for it. <laughs> I'm really happy. I'm going to go home with him that night. Okay. On the way there, walking through the, the lower city. No, uh, yeah, upper. On the way walking through the upper city, you pass a very jaunty walking Wendell. And he just walks right by. Good evening, Steven. Uh, 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 and Wendell. I go, hi, Wendell. And I'm going to run up and hug him. Uh, uh, Steven, who the hell is this? Where's Zimba? And I'm going to kiss him right on the forehead. And I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> I I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, at this point, it would be like midnight, maybe a little bit past. No, no flower shops are open. I'm going to apply to one tomorrow. Okay. You would get you get hired on the spot. You find a nice one in the lower city, uh, right next to a blacksmithing, sho blacksmithing shop. Nice. Done. That's it. That's all I wanted. And Ember spends her days working in a flower shop. Becoming a florist, no adventuring, no magic. Still maintains her friendships, but. Did she still have the bracelet for when she burned up? I would have. I actually thought about this before. <laughs> I would have given it to Steven okay. before I went into the water. It wouldn't have burned anyway. <laughs> and even sometimes. I kept my wand of fireball. <laughs> and one night. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Home security, you know what I mean? <laughs> And one night, I mean, not even just one night, but every so often you would join Nulara at her cottage. Right, Nulara, you'd have Ember over for dinner sometimes. You'd have your friends over. Yeah. And Always keep the connection. And one particular night you make your way over there and you find her and Tor outside having their dinner on the, on the grass. And Nulara had a feeling you were coming, so she prepared two extra plates for you and Steven. On your way there, you pass Wendell again. And you over, he just kind of does a quick, because he's in the middle of a conversation. Um, he's talking with that artist that drew that charcoal photo of you, DeMarco. And um, as you walk by, you just hear Wendell saying, uh, it, 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 they're both talking, and Wendell's like, it's not going to come to life or anything, will it? <laughs> and DeMarco's like, I, I don't even know what that means. I, I just draw the stuff. <laughs> okay, just, just... What are you talking about? Okay, yeah. just make it good. I just... Not that good. And you go by and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> and you have a nice dinner with your old friends. Nulara getting to play hostess again. And Nulara. Nulara. As the party breaks up. You sit on the grass for a minute, and you watch Tor go back to his house, and you watch Ember return to the cottage she bought with Stephen, and you smile. You remember the good times, and glad that you're in the place you're in now, and you get your tea kettle, and you get the plates, and you make your way back into the cottage. You close the door, and you see that little scratch mark from that time Ember shot an arrow, and you just sort of 
move it with your thumb and make a note, I gotta fix that. <laughs> and you make your way back, you put the, the dishes down on the table and you go to make yourself a fresh kettle and you see the singe mark on the wall from when Sariel casted that lightning bolt. <laughs> oh, and that floor is still moldy from the tidal wave. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> Everything has a memory. <laughs> <laughs> Mold. This kid sure messed up the house. <laughs> and you just sit and you think and you reminisce. After a few minutes, your tea kettle whistles and you pour yourself a cup and make your way over to the window of the cottage and sit down in your favorite chair. And you look at the white bridge, almost fully rebuilt by this point. And you sip your tea and you remember... You remember Cormion. You remember the you remember the Durgars. You remember Okeanos. You remember Rowena. You remember your friends. Hard to forget, seeing as they all still live in the city. <laughs> <laughs> and they all come by from time to time. And for all the first time in a long time, you're at peace. You're happy. Can I make one quick thing? Sure. No, no one died. That the night that I go <laughs> over and Tori is on the porch having dinner. Sure. Can I say, uh, hey Tor, I got some house projects for you. I really <laughs> <laughs> you the wraparound porch that I really wanted. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have a broken shutter. <laughs> I'm there. Okay. <laughs> and we flash back when Umber received her coordinates oh. and took off into the night. Okay. The night of the party? Yeah. When you, this, is when, this is while you were doing your thing at the, at the river. This is while the airship was flying away. Yeah. yeah. Umber, you make your way down into the sewers through the tunnels uh -huh. that you remember all too well. Mm -hmm. And you start passing all of these other little alcoves that you know are safe houses, uh -huh. but not the one that you need. So you're just on a mission because you don't know what this is. It was drop everything and get there now. You recognize several traps that may have come up and you're just like, okay, avoid that one, avoid that one. And eventually, the place where you know you're supposed to be ends at an, a set of ornate bronze doors uh -huh. with etchings of birds all over them. Oh. And even though you know where the coordinates are, you've never seen these doors, you've never been to this safe house. Oh, okay. So, you open the doors and as soon as you walk in, you've only ever heard of this place you've never seen it before but you know where you walk you know what you're stepping into when you get there there's a long table with seven chairs one at the head and three on each side uh -huh. the back of each chair has a different bird etched right into the wood and you're like i'm in the war room like this is where the decisions are made yeah on the other side of the t is another set of brass doors uh -huh. And on the wall you came in, there's a diorama of just birds making their way around the room. And you make your way around the table and you're saying, okay, a hawk, eagle. And then you get to the head of the table mm -hmm. and on the back of that chair is a crow. Okay. And as soon as you make your way to the back of that chair, mm -hmm. the etching begins to swirl and swirl to a point where it becomes distorted. And almost like turning to dust, it mm -hmm. comes off the chair and flies toward the wall. And on a spot on the wall where it was blank, there's now a crow. Oh. And you look back at the chair and that arcane energy is still swirling, but it appears to be co coalescing. Is that the word? Mm -hmm. Like coming together? Yeah. And you watch it for a second. Mm -hmm. And when it stops, it's a black heron. The other set of brass doors open, uh -huh. and in walks Wendell uh -huh. with the other six members. Wow. And they all take their place at their individual chairs. Yeah. Well, on your command, Black Heron, the crow wants to retire. All right. <laughs> <laughs> chair 
and go, yeah, yeah, woman in charge. <laughs> Suck it, guys. <laughs> and, um, and, um, yeah, I just want to go around the room and get status reports. Okay. Gets right yeah, to it. Right to it. A well, black yeah. heron wastes no time and goes right to work. <laughs> nope. That is why Evil you would have sleep. seen. Right. <laughs> that is why you would have seen Samwell take a back seat. He effectively retires from the aviary. Still keeps his hand in a few cookie jars because it, it's, it's him. Okay. Of course. <laughs> but he basically leaves the the chocolate factory to Black Heron. Yes. With Wendell sitting at your right hand. Nice. Wendell's alright. And we fade out on Black Heron. Mm. And we jump to several years later, many years later, and we see an older halfling man sitting at his desk, dipping a quill into ink and writing. And we hear the voice of Wendell. And he's writing about Okeanos, about the, the, the mage that everyone trusted, but the heroes of Whitebridge figured out. She was a traitor, and they hunted her down and did what heroes do. And it's your story being chronicled by your old ally, Wendell. Mm. And he gets to the end, and the citizens of Whitebridge call them heroes. The storytellers and the history books will call them legends. But I, Wendell Warmwater, got to know them as the greatest title of all. I got to call them friends. I couldn't be happier with DeMarco's template. I would personally see to it that it is painted on the white bridge itself. It is bringing, it has been an honor bringing you readers this tale. Almost as great of an honor as it was to walk alongside Ember Sadoja, Nulara Fazim, <laughs> Sashim Thunderfoot, Sari Al Tremaine, Tor Gergis, and Black Heron. Until next time, until the next adventure, your obedient W. Warm Water. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Curtain. Credits. <laughs> yes. Wow. Woo! What yes. an ending. That's what an ending. You had to do your obedience and you lost. <laughs> it's the best Very nice. thing. Very nice. That's some ending. <laughs>